the Lion of Judah shall break every chain. The Lion of Judah shall break every chain. Yeah, yeah. The Lion of Judah shall break every chain. Yeah, yeah. But the, the chain rules, cause it's unbreakable. chain rule because it's unbreakable. So what we'll see in this video is what the chain rule is and why it should never be broken. Okay, so we've already seen a lot of differentiation rules. We've seen the power rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, and so on, so we can evaluate the derivative of many functions. But not all of them. Let me give you some examples. So we're going to start with the function 1 plus x square square. How do you evaluate its derivative? Well, in this case, you can probably do it. So what you may want to do first is expand the square. So we write the function as 1 plus 2x squared plus x to the fourth power. And then you can evaluate the derivative using the sum rule, constant multiple rule, and the power rule. All right, that's good. But now if instead I had given you the function 1 plus x squared to the power of 100, well, that would be crazy. right? If you want to do the same thing, namely evaluate the derivative by first expanding the function, it's going to take you a very, very long time. So we need to find a better way of evaluating the derivative of such functions. And in fact, if instead I give you a similar function, but the square root of 1 plus x squared, now we can't even evaluate the derivative of that function using the rules that we've seen. So we need a new rule to be able to evaluate the derivative of such functions. And this is exactly what the chain rule is for. Okay, so what is the chain rule? Well, it's a differentiation rule for evaluating the derivative of composite functions. So I should probably first recall what composite functions are. So a composite function, say capital F of x, will be a function f of another function g of x. So we also use the notation of composition of functions. So in other words, there's an outer function which in this case would be f of u, say, and there's an inner function, which is where the outer function is evaluated at. So that would be u equals to g of x. Okay, so this is what a composite function is. So if we go back to the, our, our previous example, capital F of x being square root of 1 plus x squared, so if I set that to f of g of x, a composite function, then I see that the outer function in this case will just be the square root function while the inner function will be, so that would be g of x, which is going to be 1 plus x squared. So that's an example of a composite function. What we want to do now is calculate the derivative of such functions. So the chain rule is the following statement. If you have two functions, f and g, and then you form a composite function, capital F of x as being f of g of x, now assuming everything is differentiable, then the chain rule is telling you that the derivative of the composite function will be equal to f prime of g of x, so derivative of the outer function evaluated at the inner function, times the derivative of the inner function, g prime of x. And if you like Leibniz notation, so if you write y equals to f of u for the outer function and u equals g of x for the inner function, then the chain rule can be rewritten as the statement that dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. That's the exact same statement. But Leibniz notation is kind of nice because it's easy to remember the chain rule. You can think of it as basically being a cancellation of the du's on the right-hand side. Of course, it's not really canceling the du's because these are not quotients. They're just uh, derivatives. But it's a nice way of remembering what the chain rule is. What's really important when you use the chain rule is that you want to work from the outside to the inside. So you first differentiate the outer function, evaluate it at the inner function g of x, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inner function. All right, so let's do some examples. So I've kept the chain rule here in the upper right corner so you don't forget it. So my first example will be the one in the first slide, so the square root 
of 1 plus x squared. So this is a composite function, and looking at it, I see that the outer function here is just the square root function, while the inner function is 1 plus x squared. Okay, so now I can use the chain rule to calculate the derivative. So what is, the, what is the chain rule saying? It's saying that this is given by the derivative of the outer function evaluated at the inner function times the derivative of the inner function. So the outer function is the square root, so the first term here will give me 1 over 2 square root of g of x, so of 1 plus x squared, times the derivative of the inner function 1 plus x squared. All right, and then I can calculate this derivative here. What will I get? So derivative of 1 plus x squared is just 2x. Simplify the 2s, and I end up with the final result as being x over square root of 1 plus x squared. Okay, so let me do a second example. So I'm going to take my function now to be sine of x squared. So again, this is a composite function, so that's a function of a function. The outer function in this case is just the sine function, while the inner function is x squared. Okay, and then I can use the chain rule to calculate the derivative. So I first calculate the derivative of the outer function. I get a cosine evaluated at the inner function, so cosine of x squared. I'm going to put some brackets here to make sure I don't get confused. Times the derivative of the inner function, so d dx of x squared, which is just 2x. So my final result here would be 2x times cos of x squared. And let me give you a third example. So I'm going to take my function now to be sine square of x. First, uh, just a bit of notation. When you put the square here, this is not the same as this. Putting the square here is the same as saying that you take the sine function and square it. Right. Okay, so this is also a composite function but it's different from the previous one, right? I take the sine first and then I square it. So the outer function in this case is the square, while the inner function is the sine. So it's a totally different function. And then I can calculate its derivative using the chain rule. So first I calculate the derivative of the outer function. So in this case I get 2 times u, so evaluate at the inner function, so 2 times sine of x times the derivative of the inner function, so derivative of sine of x gives me cos of x. So I get 2 sine of x cos of x, which indeed is completely different from the answer to the previous case, because the function is not the same at all. Alright, so let me end this video by showing you how you can get the quotient rule from the product rule and the chain rule. So suppose that you're like me and you have a very bad memory, and then you're in the middle of an exam and, you know, high D, high, minus low D, low, dry, curve, and cube, above, or whatever, you have no idea what the quotient rule is. How can you calculate the derivative of the quotient of two functions? Well, here, here's how I would do it. So you want to calculate the derivative of f of x over g of x. So the first thing I would do is rewrite this expression slightly. So instead of f of x over g of x, I'll write f of x times the reciprocal of g of x. Now, of course, this is the exact same expression. But now I wrote it as a product of two functions, so I can calculate the derivative here just using the product rule. So I get the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first, which is just f prime of x. Okay, and how can I evaluate this derivative here? Well, this is a composite function. The inner function is g of x, outer function is the reciprocal. So I can use the chain rule. What am I going to get? So I first take the derivative of the minus 1. I get minus g of x to the minus 2 times the derivative of the inner function, g prime of x. And I still have my second term here. And then you could stop here and just, you know, given that particular f and g, you can just evaluate this expression, and that will give you the derivative. That would be fine, but let me go a few steps further to show you that this expression is exactly equivalent to the quotient rule that we've seen before. So I'm just rewrite, going to rewrite this term here, bringing the g of x to the minus 2 back in the denominator. So I get minus f of x g prime of x over g of x squared. And in the second term, I'll do the same thing, bring the g of x in the denominator. 
I get this expression. But then uh, I, I want to get the quotient rule, so in the second term I'll multiply both upstairs and downstairs by g of x to get a g of x square and the denominator. And then I can put everything on a common denominator. I bring this term first, get f prime of x g of x minus f of x g prime of x, draw the line and square below. And what you see is that this is exactly the quotient rule. Isn't it awesome? So what we've seen here is that we can get the quotient rule just by applying the product rule and the chain rule. All you have to do is rewrite the quotient as the product of two functions, where you take the reciprocal as the function that was in the denominator. So that's a kind of neat way of getting the quotient rule if you don't remember it, but uh, it is usually faster just to start with the expression of the quotient rule to calculate the derivative of a quotient.